So I don't necessarily think that the media has learned all of the lessons that they should have after four years of Donald Trump, but I will say that there has been some progress, right? I mean, the fact that there was even a conversation about whether or not it was responsible for CNN to host a town hall with Donald Trump, it does demonstrate that we're at least cognizant of the fact that these are not normal times and Trump is not a normal presidential candidate. But when it comes to other candidates, the media has missed the mark for the most part. Not all media, but in a lot of instances, you still see this liberal yearning to accept all GOP candidates who are not Trump as legitimate just because they're not Trump, when that's really dangerous, right? I don't know why they do this, perhaps for fear of losing access or accusations of bias towards the GOP. But either way, sometimes you've just got to call a spade a spade, and you should especially do that when said spade has identified themselves as such. And I'm, of course, talking about Ron DeSantis. Now, despite him being one of the most openly authoritarian fascists in the Republican Party, many people in the mainstream media and even independent media continue to gush about him simply because he is seemingly more normal than Donald Trump. Here's a couple of examples. What is evident, even after just uh, uh, this limited amount of time in your company, is that you are a competent orator, that you are a successful politician, that you are very appealing, that you've succeeded in Florida. Um, but I, I was glad to see him sit down outside of his bubble because then it helps him look more electable. I mean, it, it's one thing to do a, a Joe Rogan interview or kind of the fringes. It's another thing to sit down with a, a consummate journalist. And I think today he was able to handle those questions and deal with them. And although I don't I don't believe in his policies per se, but he actually looked decently presidential today. Liberals stop normalizing fascist challenge. Impossible. They just they have to. Now, those two short clips are really a microcosm of a broader issue that I'm seeing where liberals try to convince themselves that DeSantis isn't really that bad because he's more respectable and articulate than Donald Trump. And to be clear, many mainstream and independent media pundits have, I think, adequately assessed the danger level of Ron DeSantis. But still, you see this overall effort, maybe not necessarily an effort, but the sense from a lot of pundits to try to sanitize his record and sanitize him simply because he's not Donald Trump. And that is very dangerous. Yes, Trump may behave like an unhinged buffoon. So it's easy to identify that and say that is stupid. That's absurd. I want somebody who's more respectable. But DeSantis has also tried to tell us who he is. But there's so many people who don't want to listen to what he's saying, although some people are definitely listening. And they're picking up on the clues that he's leaving for them. But mainstream media pundits and some independent media pundits, I'm looking at you, Jimmy Dore, I'm looking at you, Russell Brand, aren't taking the hint that other people are taking. For example, Nazis who support Ron DeSantis seem to have a pretty good idea of his motivations, as do his staffers who retweeted then deleted this video of DeSantis and a Nazi symbol imposed over a flag of Florida with soldiers marching towards it. That's where we're at, where they're using Nazi imagery in his presidential campaign. If that's not a red flag, then nothing is. Now, they deleted it, right? So it was clearly a mistake on the part of his staffers. But I mean, you can't really blame them for thinking that he would like that when, you know, he taps people like this for their policy expertise. They talk about the Holocaust, but the Jews own everything. I thank God for slavery. Mm. I thank God for the crack house. If it wasn't for the crack house, come on somebody, God wouldn't have never been able to use me how he can use me now. And if it wasn't for slavery, I might be somewhere in Africa worshiping a tree. As the video stated, that was Kim Daniels, an openly anti-Semitic preacher who DeSantis placed on his African-American history task force. In other words, she is helping DeSantis shape education for Florida, for all of Florida. And you can already see the effect 
that she's having because as Chris Walker of Truthout explains, the Florida Board of Education has approved new curriculum standards for lessons on black history that racial justice advocates and educators say will whitewash the brutality of white supremacy and slavery in the United States. The board will now require teachers to tell middle school students that enslaved people gained a personal benefit from the skills they learned under slavery before Civil War. Yeah, so that is going to be a huge yikes from me. Apparently in Florida, saying that slavery was unequivocally bad is a bit of a hot take, I guess, right? Don't want to be too uncharitable to these slave owners. Want to make sure that you tell them, oh, they also taught them skills. I mean, for that matter, are we going to talk about how the Nazis, they weren't that bad, I guess, because they let the Jewish people who they abducted keep the clothing that they had on their backs. What are we doing here? Why are we doing this is the question that people should be asking, and I think that we all know why. It's a rhetorical question because we all know the answer. And Marilyn Magar, who's another DeSantis appointee, responded to the backlash saying, actually, we're proud of the changes that they, ma that they made, where we're going to force teachers to tell middle schoolers about the benefits of slavery. But I mean, maybe this task force, all of these appointees that DeSantis himself decided to put there went rogue and they decided to do what he didn't want them to do. Perhaps he wouldn't approve of these changes, right? Actually wrong because he defended this change in particular. Well, you should talk to them about it. I mean, I didn't do it, and I wasn't involved in it, um, but I think, um, I think what they're doing is I think that they're probably going to show um, some of the folks that eventually parlayed, uh, you know, being a blacksmith into, into doing things later, later in life. Um, but the reality is all of that is rooted in whatever is factual. They listed everything out. And if you have any questions about it, just ask the Department of Education. You can talk about those folks. But, I mean, these were scholars who put that together. It was not anything that was, um, that was done politically. So he's okay with it. Interesting. You know, I don't know what you call this, right? What do you call someone who says that they are okay with teachers being forced to tell students the benefits of slavery after they already banned an AP African American Studies course from the school curriculum. What do you call that person? Hmm. Maybe it rhymes with Macist? I, I don't know. If I could think of the accurate descriptor, that's charitable, of course, because we've got to be charitable to these folks. I'll let you know. It's just, what are we doing? It's so ridiculous. Now, his campaign also boosted an ad that portrays him as the most homophobic and transphobic GOP candidate. And that video stood out to me not only because I was in it, but because of how brazen it was, right? Now, it happened again. I'm in another Ron DeSantis ad along with the leftist mafia and other leftist content creators like Farron Cousins and David Pakman. And like that last ad that we talked about in a different video, I'm not going to rehash that. You can watch what I said about that. I'll link to it down below. But anyways, um, like that last ad, they basically play clips of us talking about how DeSantis is worse than Trump because he's more capable and smarter than Trump, more cunning than Trump. Uh, so here is an example, just so you kind of get a sense of the way that that ad goes uh, because it's five minutes so we can't watch the whole thing so just here's like a little snippet so you get the crux of the ad i honestly believe desantis was forged in hell there's no doubt in my mind look at my face we think desantis is more dangerous than trump to some degree because he's less incompetent if anyone out there thinks somehow he is any better than donald trump then they don't know ron desantis if you thought donald trump was bad you got another thing coming. He may actually be able to do a lot of the things Trump merely wanted to do but failed to do. DeSantis is somebody who will work in the dark, work in the shadows. He will still accomplish what Trump wants to accomplish. Maybe he's going to do things in a quieter manner, but th believe me, the end result is not going to be good. But he will do so successfully because he's not over the top. He isn't in your face. He doesn't have a lot of baggage. So, I mean, you get the point, right? They're trying to take these criticisms and own it. Oh, you think that I'm scary? That's right. You should be scared of me because unlike Trump, I can actually get things done. And that is basically the essence of the ad. But there's a couple of correct criticisms in there. I mean, all of those criticisms are correct, but there's a couple of criticisms on there that go a little bit further. And 
you would think that the team wouldn't want to own these particular criticisms, considering the fact that they detail the threat that DeSantis poses to democracy and his authoritarian tendencies, but they included this in the ad as if it's a good thing. Let's watch. Ron DeSantis would be far more dangerous than Donald Trump. DeSantis is an even greater threat to democracy than Trump. He's a threat to our democracy and a threat to He's a threat. It is beginning to feel less like a governorship and more like a regime. He's running more to the extreme than Trump on several issues. The guy who will wield power in a way that extends even beyond what Trump did. Authoritarianism that goes even beyond what Trump has talked about. Those little tidbits were sprinkled in towards the end of the video. But I mean, they're broadcasting these criticisms and they're owning it. Right. His team is effectively saying, yes, we are all of these bad things. We're your worst nightmare. But also, yeah, we do pose a threat to democracy. We want you to know that DeSantis is an authoritarian. I mean, if the policies weren't evidence enough, here's us admitting effectively in a roundabout way that, yes, he does pose a threat to democracy in the same way that Trump does. Be fearful of us. This is what DeSantis's team is broadcasting to all of us. They're saying, look, they all think he is a threat to democracy, teehee, because he is. Now, let me be extremely clear in case my words are used in another ad by his team. Hi, everyone, if you're watching. Uh, Ron DeSantis isn't just a fascist. Ron DeSantis is a Hitlerian fascist. Use that in an ad. That's a good soundbite, I think, right? Just own it. You're already basically saying it. Just come out and say it. Ron DeSantis is a Hitlerian fascist, and he's proud. He's proud that he models his governing style after demagogues like Viktor Orban and literal Nazis during World War II. And I'm not saying that he's like a carbon copy of Hitler, right? There are differences between DeSantis and Hitler. But I mean, if you like Hitler, if you're a neo-Nazi and you're a fan of Hitler, well, he's your fascist. He's your guy. He is unquestionably the closest to you ideologically. His team has made that clear. That's not what I'm saying. That's what they're saying. So rather than seeing the good in him, if you're a mainstream media or independent media pundit because he's not Donald Trump, see what's actually there when we remove Trump from the equation. Because that matters too, right? When people tell you who they are, we should believe them. And Ron DeSantis has repeatedly told us all who he is. He is an authoritarian fascist because he wants to do bad things, in particular to marginalized people and consolidate power. But yet, we don't listen to him when he repeatedly tells us who he is simply because he's not Donald Trump. But let's listen to him, because if he's this brazen now, when he's trying to get elected, imagine how bad he's going to be after he's elected. So if you're a neo-Nazi, I'm sure his repeated dog whistles to you make you feel really warm and fuzzy. But to the rest of society, we should take that as a serious warning that we're in danger if this individual gets elected. But yet, if you're Russell Brand or you are Bakari Sellers or your other mainstream media or independent media pundits, he's not Trump. So he's smart. He's good. Not Trump. So that's all that matters. Look at the bigger picture. Right. And also look to history, because if we don't learn from history, we are doomed to repeat it. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympics. Woke ideology. 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 Wo